Should you be going to church with COVID on the rise? Well, it kind of depends. This question has turned into a heated debate amongst Christians. And I, I think one of the problems is that we try to take gray matters and make them either black or white. When you consider the, the rise in COVID cases that we've seen, especially in the latter part of this summer, it becomes a very tricky situation at best. And there's a lot of variables, a lot of things to consider and unpack when you try to make an assumption or an assertion about whether or not someone should decide to attend in-person worship. And I think we have to look at this issue or this debate and we have to understand that even if we see people whom could be or should be attending church right now and they're not attending church right now uh, it's best for us to view this as an opportunity to try to win that person and not an argument. I think we make a grave mistake when we try to shame people into going to church. And it's good for us to have a healthy and biblical framework for understanding perhaps why people make the decisions that they make or for ourselves personally, you know, in helping us make this decision on whether to attend in-person worship or not. I'm reading a great book by Daryl Bach called Cultural Intelligence, and he makes the point that people are not the enemy, they are the goal. So in talking about this issue or engaging in this debate, I think we have to keep that at the forefront, that our goal should be to win brothers and sisters to Christ and not to be so quick to judge whether or not someone's priorities may be jacked up or not. I want to look at both sides of this argument and two of the arguments that you'll typically hear when it comes to attending in-person worship or not attending in-person worship. So the most popular argument you'll hear right now from people who are proponents of attending church during COVID is the people go everywhere else. They go to Walmart argument. And I often laugh when I talk to my friends about this argument because it's though we, we, we make Walmart equal everything else. If you go to Walmart, that means you must be doing everything else. So it's funny, but it, this is also a tricky argument, and I think we have to really lean on what we have learned about the virus when it comes to this argument. And we also have to pause some of our uh, assumptions about what people are doing just because we see them at Walmart. There is some credence to this argument though, but, but I wanna talk about an easy rebuttal that we have to consider when it comes to making an assumption that if a person is, say, taking trips to Walmart or whatever, whatever grocery store they go to that they have returned to business as usual, uh, comparing a trip to Walmart to attending worship on Sunday is not a one-to-one -one comparison, right? It's kind of apples and oranges. Yes, it is leaving the house, and yes, it is risking exposure, but when you look at what what we've learned and you look at some of the recommendations from the CDC, going to Walmart for a quick trip to grab some essentials is not the same as sitting in a 45 minute to 90 minute worship service. Also going to Walmart and going into a larger retail store is quite different from sitting in a smaller sanctuary space. I mean, there are some huge churches who have excellent ventilation uh, and, and excellent systems for, you know, keeping the air somewhat virus free but not every church has this, right? And so in a lot of instances, going into Walmart for a 15 or 20 minute shopping trip is safer than being in a church service for 45 to 90 minutes. On the flip side of that though, I think what people are actually suggesting when they make the going to Walmart argument is that, well, People are going to Walmart, and not only are they going to Walmart, but it seems that they have returned to business as usual in the other areas of their lives, right? And it causes it causes us to wonder some things when we see that people have gone back to business as usual uh, every other day of the week except on Sunday. And I think that that's a concern for believers. It's especially a concern for me as a pastor to see that, you know, Life is business as usual, except when it comes to church. But here's the problem. We have to be able to look at those situations. And even though we're concerned, if we feel compelled to say something, make sure that's coming from a place of love. Make sure our tone, our tenor, and our approach uh, is coming from a place that says, 
We, we want to win you. We want to make sure that you understand the dangers of neglecting your spiritual health, right? Like your physical health is a priority, but also consider that there's a spiritual element to this and neglecting uh, the gathering and the encouragement of, of other believers. So this argument, again, is not a foolproof argument for determining whether or not someone's priorities are jacked up just because they go to Walmart. I think that's a harsh judgment because you may see them at Walmart, but that may be the only trip that they make throughout the week. They may not be having or attending social events. They may be not be going to restaurants. They may not be attending family functions. They may not be doing a lot of other things. So Walmart is not the true parameter for where or how comfortable a person feels in public spaces. On the flip side of that, you have those who are not proponents of attending worship when we have such a spike in COVID cases occurring right now. And they don't want church forced on them. They don't want to be shamed into attending in-person worship. And their argument is often, I can just worship at home. Now, there is some credence to that argument, but there's also something that we need to be very leery of, right? There's credence to the argument in that technology has provided us amazing opportunities to continue our, our worship, our corporate worship uh, in a virtual space when it was not safe or when it is not safe to attend corporate worship or to conduct corporate worship in the physical space. I think that it's amazing. I love technology. I I'm so glad that we've been able to use it as a stopgap or a supplement to our weekly rhythms. But I think that we have to make sure that we view it as just that, a supplement and a stopgap and not a replacement for in-person gathered worship. Now, at the church where I served, we were worshiping virtually only for quite some time. We have returned back into our sanctuaries, but only the Lord knows how long that will be feasible or safe, or if that's the best decision for the foreseeable future. I think it's a situation where every leader, every pastor, uh, every person is gonna have to determine, you know, what's best right now. But I think we have to make sure that we understand that gathering together and the assembly of believers is very important and it's pivotal to our Christian development and it's pivotal to our faith. Right? So making sure that we view worshiping at home, virtual worship, all of the technological offerings as just a supplement or a temporary stopgap to um, the endangerment that we could experience because of COVID-19 is very important. There's a reason in Hebrews 10, it talks about not neglecting to gather together as is the habit of some. There's a reason that that habit of neglecting the fellowship of the believers is, is condemned, right? It, it's because Throughout Hebrews, in that chapter and the other chapters, there are many warnings, right, for believers not to drift away, not to devalue Christ. And we see in this particular passage, we should not devalue the gathering of believers, the physical gathering of believers, because there is something about that that, that, that helps us. It gives us stability, gives us some structure. It serves our faith and it helps us to maintain, you know, a very high view of our salvation and our commitment to Christ. On the flip side of that, when we neglect such things, I think what it is trying to communicate to us is that we become more susceptible to being deceived. And the biggest danger I see with the virtual space when it comes to church is that it's an opportunity for the devil to deceive us and to lead us to believe that we don't need the church as believers. We don't have to actually worship together. We don't actually have to be connected to a local body, that the building is unnecessary. And none of those things are true. No, the building is not the most important thing and the bu building is not the beginning and the end of, our, uh, of who we are as Christians and it's not the definition of Christianity, but it is an important space, right? Just as a lot of people are more likely to see better gains by having a gym membership and going to a gym, 
Um, many Christians just are better served by having that regular rhythm and stability and structure uh, of a gathered place, a designated place of worship. It's the same way that, you know, you may need a dietitian to help you stick to a good diet and, and to get to a healthy place when it comes to the food you consume. You may need to go to church, be around other believers, be encouraged, um, be able to witness the worship of other believers and worship God yourself in the physical space in order to keep that as preeminent in your heart. Because there's so many things, even virtually, that can distract us when we worship from home. There's so many things just outside of weekly worship that, that are vying for our attention and having that stability, just as we would go to a personal trainer or hire a dietitian, someone to hold us accountable, someone to give us structure, someone to give us some consistency, um, that gathered space and that stability and that rhythm helps us as believers to stay focused on Christ and not to be overwhelmed by our problems. So I think ultimately, this issue is a very complex one, but it's imperative that we construct a biblical framework for arriving at the right decision for us. And on the flip side of that, it's important that we really examine the situation and understand that we don't know everything about a person's situation or circumstances or all of the variables that may play into their decision, and we should not rest a judgment about whether or not they should be going to church. Until next time, peace.